Ah, here I am. Hello there. <laughs> right, now you know who I am. I'm Paul Cheel, son of Bill Cheel. My dad's war memoirs were published by Pen and Sword a few years back, fighting through from Dunkirk to Hamburg. And the first thing my dad, dad, my dad did during the war was go to Dunkirk. And uh, he had to escape from England, from, from Dunkirk in France, back to England. And when dad, all those years back, came onto the coast with his comrades, they'd had a torrid time in France. They'd been fighting all the way back from wherever they were and they finally had orders to get to this place, Bray Dune. And as they approached the beach, as far as they could see, was tens upon thousands of soldiers all the way up the coastline. And there were dead and wounded lads all over the place. The Stukas had just been over. And there was one lad about 20 yards from dad with his stomach ripped open, crying for his mum. He was being attended to by a medic, but he wasn't going to live. And there were soldiers queuing up into the sea, up to their shoulders, queuing to get onto the small craft to evacuate themselves. Hi, Sixth Guards, Tank. How are you? I hope this is working for everybody. If you want to go to fighting through podcast.co.uk, there's a tab for the Periscope page and you can contact me through that. But this place is called Bray Dunes because of all its dunes. And Dad's company took shelter amongst these dunes here. But before they even got here, as I say, they'd had a torrid time and they'd been fighting all the way through France and uh, battling their way back amongst refugees who were all fleeing the onslaught of the German army, the Blitzkrieg. And there's one instance where Dad said he saw an old man and woman upon finding the bullets coming towards them from a Stuka turned to each other and hugged each other and, would, and, killed, and were killed. They dropped dead. And people with wheelbarrows, bicycles, cars, everything, anything that could carry anything, were trying to get out of the area. Absolute devastation. And as Dad looked along the beach, at the far end of the beach, about five miles up there, you can see that's Dunkirk. And the sky was black from the blazing oil tanks from where the Germans had bombed them. And in the distance is where Dad eventually marched to evacuate. And that's Dunkirk. And they got to a thing called the East Mall. But before they managed to do that, they hid among the sand dunes. And there are some up here. As you can see, I'll climb up if I can. Um, but there were soldiers digging slit, tranks, slit trenches all over the place to try and take shelter. And over a five or six day period, soldiers were being evacuated by small boats and large ships. We shouldn't forget the large ships. But there's one instance told in Dad's commander was Major Petch. And uh, welcome, there's got 47 viewers now. I hope this is working for you all, I really do. I'm so pleased you've joined me, thank you. Just in case anyone's just joined us, we're in Bray Dune in France, or at technically Belgium, which is just up the coast from Dunkirk. But uh, my dad's commander was Major Petch, and dad for a period was his Batman, which meant he had to attend to all his needs. Dunkirk in the distance and um, Major Petch told his memoirs I'm going to be doing a podcast the next few weeks and months on specifically on Major Petch's memoirs he tells one story where some of the troops had dug slit trenches 
uh, including one for an officer who wasn't there at the time. And when the officer returned, two frightened soldiers from a, another regiment had uh, occupied his slit trench, and he could, he could he told them they could stay there. And within an hour, a mortar bomb had landed on the slit trench and killed them. So that's so many tragic stories. But equally, if you ever tune into Major Petch's podcast, um, you'll hear a load of funny stories as well. Uh, it's a bit windy here, but uh, I'm Paul Cheel, son of Bill Cheel, whose World War II memoirs have been published by Pen and Sword. They're called Fighting Through from Dunkirk to Hamburg. I'm now just going to turn back to look at Dunkirk. Eventually, after spending a night on the beaches and stuck a bombers going over, mercilessly killing all the thousands of troops, the soldiers used to fire their rifles at the Stukas, but they were useless, it was pointless. But eventually, Commander Major Petch took the troops up the beach, five miles in the heavy, soft sand. And at this point, of course, the troops were absolutely exhausted. In fact, only of Dad's battalion, only a third of them actually got through to Bray Dune. And somehow the rest of them made their way backwards, made their way home, one way or another, if they weren't captured. But when they finally got to the East Mall, which is no longer there, sadly, um, they walked along the East Mall and got onto it. It was like a, a very, very narrow pier, and it wasn't really meant for ships to be berthed alongside it, but uh, circumstances must, and that's what happened. And they queued along the East Mall, and there were, there were troops in the water, w troops in the sea with water up to their shoulders at this point but eventually they walked along the East Mall which was about a quarter of a mile long I think probably longer than that um, thanks for following me you guys there's a few people following me on Twitter at Paul Cheel if you didn't know um, yeah they were walking along the, the mall to clamber on board this ship and there was a huge gap in the planks where a bomb had gone through and there were soldiers in full gear jumping across these the, across the gap because they didn't want to wait for the to get across on the planks but anyway eventually they got onto the ship and they were counted aboard and the, the Padre uh, Love Grove said a prayer and slowly but surely the ship pulled away from the East Mall the sky was black from the burning oil tanks and even as the ship pulled away, they were being attacked by Stukas. Um, and Major Petch's memoir tells of uh, one of them being shot down and uh, the parachutist coming down in the sea not far from the ship. But when the plane was shot down, everybody on the beach all gave an almighty cheer. But shortly after that, another Stuka came over and Dad saw bombs coming down to the ship and he thought his time had come but luckily the bombs landed in the water and as the ship pulled away from the mall Stukas came down again and there were lads on the beach running everywhere and dad said the Stuka coming along that swathe of soldiers on the beach it just looked like a row of dominoes going down from one end but eventually the Greenhouse all got, all got back to Cardiff and that's where they were stationed for a while whilst they, were, they regrouped. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very much for tuning in. Really good to see everybody. Um, my hair looks like candy floss. Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> Sorry, I just got, nearly got pulled over by a dog. Um, good to see you, everybody. Uh, next two or three days, I'm going to Bayer, Aramanche, loads of places, so keep tuned. 